Good morning. Welcome to Holy Trinity Catholic Church. Our Mass intentions for today are for the repose of the souls of Adolf Skarbuchek, Sulema Mejia, and a special intention for the Holy Trinity Cancer Support Group. Let us begin our celebration singing, Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Let us begin. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Is the scepter, is the throne. Alleluia, is the triumph, is the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion, thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus, out of every nation, hath redeemed us by his blood. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning. Happy Easter. My brothers and sisters, we gather as a community of believers, followers of our risen Lord, to prepare ourselves to celebrate his sacred mysteries. Let us pause for just a moment and recognize our need for his forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, 
we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a crippled man from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, He asked for alms, but Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all of the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, Invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him. Sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Serve to seek him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, son of Jacob, his chosen ones, he the Lord is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, He gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that, while he was with them at the table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the 11 and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the most profound lessons I learned while being formed as a priest in seminary One phrase that I heard over and over uh, as it pertains to being a minister is, you can't give what you don't have. Seems pretty apparent, but I'd like to rephrase that, especially as we as ministers contemplate Jesus' proximity to our ministry, is that we cannot give who we do not have. In today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Peter and John approach the man who cannot walk. And Peter says, I have neither silver nor nor gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus the Nazarene, rise and walk. In our efforts at ministry, We are filled with all kinds of emotions. 
A lot of that depends on who we're ministering to and what the situation is. Sometimes ministry can go real easily, almost like greased lightning. Other times, it's very frustrating. It seems as though everything we're trying isn't working. Everything we're praying for doesn't appear to be happening. But we must constantly remind ourselves it is not we who are doing the work. It is Jesus who's doing the work. And in those moments of ministry where we find ourselves called in a particular moment to minister to another person, we must remember who it is we have, who it is who has accompanied us our entire life, especially our life of faith, that our Lord Jesus Christ is not far away. When I was growing up, we had long-distance phone calls. It had to be very important to give a person a call who lived long distance because you're charged extra for it. Our Lord is not far away. He is not long distance. He's been walking with us the entire time. We don't have to call far for our Lord. He is close to us. Close to us the way he was close to the two disciples in today's gospel reading. Today's gospel reading is only found in the gospel of Luke, often named the road to Emmaus. And I love the Easter octave and Easter time because we read and we hear of all the stories of what happened after Jesus' resurrection. Mysterious and joyful days after Jesus' resurrection. And in today's gospel reading, we we find a template of our Mass, and we find a template of one's growth in faith, similar to, if not almost identical to, the growth of faith that occurs with participants in the RCIA process. We notice that Jesus opens up the word, breaks open the word for them, helps them understand who the Bible was talking about. How the prophets, with Moses, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. And it began to make sense to those disciples. And they journeyed together, meditating, contemplating scriptures, and they gather at a table where it's Jesus himself who serves as the host, breaking the bread, and at once their eyes are opened. Let this be a reminder that all of us who are present at Mass, here in the chapel, but also there at home, we were all on this journey as these two disciples were. allowing the Lord to interpret to us what refers to him in the scriptures and accepting the invitation and joining with Jesus to sit at table and to share a meal. And by this experience, we are filled with joy and we return to our friends to tell them how good the Lord has been to us, how he's been with us the entire time, how all of us whose hearts have been burning within us are satisfied by his company, satisfied by his presence, and comforted by his love, that our Lord is never far away from us. And in this time, when we are experiencing certainly devastation, possibly depression, frustration certainly being confined to our homes. Let us remember that the early Easter celebrators, the first Christians, were confined in their homes. And let this be a time for us to pray about those first Christians, the experiences that they had, who they believed in, how they must have heard about Jesus being risen, And I think that's a good Easter prayer for us and relate to our lives 
how Jesus has been with us and how Jesus' risen life has been present in our life and how through the grace of God, through the grace of God, we, through our baptism, have been able to participate in it, participate in God's life, a life which never ends, a life which is filled with love and compassion and mercy. We rejoice because our hearts seek the Lord. In faith, let us place our petitions before our Heavenly Father. For religious leaders, that they may continue to bring Christ, the light of the world, to all whom they serve, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we as a nation may respect the sacredness of human life at every stage of its existence and never endanger it through any action of ours, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those baptized into the faith may really believe God's message of salvation and allow it to grow through prayer and service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all children, that their friendship with Jesus may keep them close to him always, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of prayer in our parish community, that our lives may be examples to others of our belief in the power of the Spirit to renew and transform. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have passed through suffering to death, that the glory of the resurrection may be their lasting joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of Adolf Skarbacek, and Sulema Mejia, and we also pray especially for the Holy Trinity Cancer Support Group. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother's intercession praying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, in prayer we place our needs before you. Increase our faith and make us ever more aware of your loving presence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, now we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us the salvation of mind and body. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. <clears throat> And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gustavo, our Archbishop, Michael, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy.
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The disciples recognized the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. We'll sing verse 2 of Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Alleluia, not as orphans, are we left in sorrow now? Alleluia, he is near us. Faith believes nor questions how. Though the cloud from sight received him, when the forty days were o'er, shall our hearts forget his promise? I am with you evermore. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a good